Hello, one and all. Welcome back to the Style Season 14 playoffs. Our best of three tonight is from the Targon Division. It will be a lower bracket elimination bout between ninth seed SON Leviathan and eighth seed Four Cheese Blend. One interesting thing to note about these teams is that both of them were defeated in the Rumble stage and sent to the lower bracket by Mythic Academy, who, by the way, will be playing against NWE Delta in the upper bracket final tomorrow night. Four Cheese Blend had the misfortune of being the first to go up against MA in the postseason. The Cheeses were able to get a win in the first game, but of course it wasn't enough to make it past Mythic in that first round. However, 4CB met first seed bedtime at 7 in the lower bracket and rose to the challenge, defeating the Targon Division favorites with a 2-1 to match score. ADC Emerald Plastic put in some especially impressive performances in games 2 and 3 with combined 32, 6, and 13 KDA on Jinx and Kaisa, respectively. SON Leviathan were the second to face off against the Mythic Machine. They are coming off a tough 0-2 defeat from exactly one week ago, although they did have a very strong showing in the first round of the playoffs against second seed Mint Gaming. In Game 1, SON top laner Malakor carried with the Klet going 10-2-5, and, and in the deciding Game 3, it was the Vagar fiddle combo from the mid-jungle that seems to have done most of the heavy lifting so we've seen some great things out of both of these teams thus far in the playoffs with both squads able to punch above their weight and take down some very serious opponents tonight they face one another in a fight for their playoff lives bringing you the call my name is crewman and i am joined once again by the one and only abba trombone you ready for this one abba Oh, yeah, I'm really ready for this one. I was there when that Fiddlesticks was really popping off and really setting up a lot of plays. The Bush Cheese with the Gale Walker there, mm. setting up a lot of stuff from going on, and they were able to get a nice, successful game there, and it was a very fun set to watch. So we'll have to see if this is going to be popping off again with how these teams are operating. Uh, this is the Rumble round, like you said, so whoever get knocked out won't be there for uh, the next setup. That's exactly right. Loser tonight will be out of season 14. Their season will end here and the other, you know, still a little bit of a long road ahead through this yeah. playoff bracket, right? Still, I think two or three uh, best of threes that they are going to have to win if they want a shot at that first yeah. place. But we're into draft for game one, ABBA. What are you expecting in terms of priorities between these two teams? Well, there's a lot of engage opportunities. I've seen Zach do particularly well on some of these setups, possibly with how well that Fiddlesticks was going on if they ended up seeing that or just did some scouting as well. There's a potential for that to be set up as well. Uh, and, of course, some of these 80 carries bands are going to be kind of important here as well just because a lot of lanes tend to be playing through the mid and bot lane. So just seeing those go through here, uh, just one thing to note, there is a ban loss on the side of mm. some Leviathan because of an E-sub, so they'll lose one in game one. Yep, thank you for pointing that out, Abba. Definitely something important to uh, note, but that is only for game one, I understand. Yes, only, right? only, one, only for game one. Game two, they'll be full on. All right. Well, we'll see if that missed ban ends up coming into play here. They're looking to target a couple of jungle options from the side of Leviathan, banning away the Amumu and the J4. And there is going to be the Kled, notably, that's going to hit the bench from the side of Four Cheese. A first pick, Yumi. Oh, dear. I've never seen this before. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, Yumi can kind of just be slapped onto whatever beefy boy you want. Of course, with the weight, the changers are going on right now. Riot has tried to make it more favorable just to be sitting there with your favorite buddy in the bot lane trying to scale up and do a lot of damage. We'll have to see if that's the play style that's going to be coming through, if they're going to be utilizing it like that, or if they're going to go with the old school style. It's going to be a little bit more traditional to try and match that, make sure they're safe, they can heal, probably a lot of trading going on that lane, and just making sure they're going to be able to scale and get the farm they need. Definitely the case. Uh, you know, the cat, the dreaded cat has returned once again, as we can see, a priority pick here in competitive League of Legends. The response from Four Cheese is going to be the Sejuani oh. and the Seraphine locked away. Sivir being considered. A nice hyper carry option with the Yumi, I think. Yep. 
Yep, a lot of movement speed between those champions. You, you're just going to run at them. You basically make everyone into like a little mini Udyr is the way I think of it. You just run super fast, try and get your engage set up, and go through there. Or if you're getting caught out, you can get your entire team out because it's just so massive here. And Lilia here is also sticking with that movement speed uh, plan as well, making sure they're left behind in the dust, out in the back, falling asleep as they're too far behind. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see if that ends up coming through. Lots of movement speed, you know, as, as you're just saying. Uh, just really a point of focus, it seems, for the side of Leviathan in this draft. Now, from four cheese, I expect an AD carry lock-in here to sort of match what their opponents have been able to secure for themselves. Uh, I am assuming that Seraphine is going to be in the support position, and there's the Jinx locked in. So this is, of course, a comfort pick for Emerald Plastic, something that, as I was mentioning before, they were able to perform extremely well on uh, in one of these, in one of those previous matches. Yeah, just the other day, I was seeing a Jinx do very, very well, getting lots of gold under the characters, doing a lot of damage, and just being able to scale into the game. Of course, one of the key weaknesses that you have is Jinx is that you're not very self-sufficient. You need someone to be there with you. Chompers can only do so much, can only peel for so much, and take some time to set up. So if you ended up getting picked out, that's a lot of damage being lost in your team. So if Forchi's blend's plan here is to only have Jinx, they're going to have to be very careful to protect her and make sure that Seraphine's Encore is going to be on point to make sure they don't get onto her, and that says going to be able to peel anyone off or counter engage should they need to. Absolutely. Now it's going to be the solo lane focus for the second phase of bans. The Varus uh, ban from the side of Four oh. Cheese is a little bit interesting to me. I'm maybe uh, expecting... Uh, like a pocket Varus mid to come out or, or something like this? A little he, curious. he can go mid. His AP is pretty potent, although generally when you go with an AP Varus, you're there to shred tanks. So an interesting setup. He does have some nice crowd control to go with it with his chain of corruptions, just being able to make sure everyone stays put. But it looks like Darius makes a little bit more sense of a ban here as he's a pretty big juggernaut and can carry games on his own. Split push should he need to, or potentially you set up some picks if he gets that extra movement speed to just hop in and yoink someone in. Yeah, definitely the case. And then a couple of top laners banned out by Leviathan as well. The Orn and the Mordekaiser going to get removed. Now our four pick for four cheese. I imagine this will probably be the mid pick, uh, although they could yeah. go top as well. If they I, I've to. seen it happen, but I, I would predict that you generally want top to be the counter pick as it's, kind of a stat check lane you try to see who's going to be balancing out who here and figure out mm. how that's going to go although it looks like shen's going to be the pick here he shen can go mid but it's it's most likely top right it, it's, it's just going to be a shen top so they're going to stand united and they're just going to be able to make sure that some of these more important carries are going to be there if he's splitting he can just jump in on try and protect the jinx with his massive shield or if Sejuani's going in deep they're going to be able to follow up from a cross map play so there's a good potential of a 4-1 split here or just being able to have a fairly solid team fight with all these people going in Seraphine's Encore is just going to have some extra targets that she can try and set up to to extend its range to make sure as many people are hit by it as possible yeah the way these compositions are shaping up seems like it's going to be all about the bot lane but maybe not as we see the Pantheon the aspect of war over there getting locked in for the side of Leviathan. So that is certainly a very volatile lane wherever that Pantheon is going to end up. You it, know, a champion it that could be mid or it could be top to try and match the Shen because Shen's going to be ulting in and then Pantheon mm. can do that as well and try and get a nice pick set up here. It's going to be able to utilize a lot of this movement speed. Of course, they fall off, but you need some early game to try and get some of these hyper carries here like Corky and Sivir. And just having a Yumi slap them to these carries is going to give them the mobility they need, some of the stats they might want, and they're just going to be able to play this nice and slow and poke people out. Like with, they have so much range. They do. They do have so much range with that Corky getting locked in as the last pick, and the Yumi. You know, as you've been talking about, giving them that additional movement speed, uh, that additional safety coming in. But there is the Zillion on R five for four G. So trying to match the scaling a little bit in the mid lane, but still uh, pretty severely outranged, as you were just talking about there, Abba. Yeah, 
one thing to note that Zillion does warp games. So if they're able to get some nice setups, we'll say a Sejuani dives in and Zillion can go in and ultimate there and they're going to be able to be picked up. It's a big threat to deal with because if you take them out, well, they're just going to come back. They're going to have probably more HP than when they were really low, which can make things problematic to do. And Zillion can do some zoning with his own along with Seraphine. Jinx's Zappers is also a pretty decent chunk of range. Uh, it's not going to be quite as much as necessarily some Leviathans as Sivir's Q is quite large. That Pantheon Spirit's pretty big. Lilia's range, the bowling ball, just going down playing Wii Sports is pretty big as well. So it's going to be harder for them necessarily to get some picks, but if they're able to get some vision earlier on, they can really control that space should they want to, as Chompers eats up an entire entrance point uh, in the river. Yeah, definitely the side of Four Cheese has some pretty solid zone control with the Chompers, with uh, basically Seraphine's entire kit, and then Zillion as well can come in with the double bombs to try and control choke points also. And that's not even mentioning the Sejuani, so... Uh, definitely, I I like that uh, the fact that you're pointing that out. That if they do have control over an area, you know they should be able to keep that control pretty comfortably. Sort of the flip side of that, though, is the fact that they could potentially they have the potential to get poked out. The side of yep. Leviathan, you know, they don't necessarily have to commit forward into that area with a big engage. They can just throw their abilities in there, try and lower those HP bars before the fight even begins. Yeah, a solid point for sure. If they're able to get a lot of this poke, that's a lot of pressure. If you're not able to take these objectives fast enough, if you don't have enough gold to do that and really just turn on them, it makes decisions quite difficult. The counterplay to this is going to be the Shen here who could possibly split push. And as they're fiddling around over an objective, Shen might be trying to get something which does favor four cheese blend in this case, if that's the setup they're able to get to. Of course, if he's too deep in and having to respond to a wave, that makes that choice a little bit harder with how gold is going to be pressured across the map, how much XP they're going to be losing, and how important really is that objective when they have to make some of these decisions. Yeah, exactly right. We'll have to see, you know, what kind of early dragons we get. Uh, the type of soul that we have in this game could definitely be very impactful in terms of, you know, allowing that Shen to stay in the side lane or, you know, the Pantheon, depending on whoever's getting that early stack going. Um, yeah. Sun Leviathan's just going to absolutely love a wind drake here. <laughs> just so much movement <laughs> speed. Imagine oh, the, that soul and Sivir presses R and then Yumi says go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty terrifying. Um, I mean, just yeah, like there's Leviathan. only one uh, chrono shift for Zillion. So when uh, everybody is getting run down by a super fast Sivir and, and Deer Lady, then um, it's going to be going to be tough to actually. Or a quirky make... package with that? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, lots of tools for Leviathan, no doubt about it. Uh, we, you know, we could talk a, a little bit about the scaling here as well. So Yumi obviously used to be an absolute terror in the uh, late game department. Uh, you know, really just getting to a point, generally speaking, where she's able to keep uh, her allies alive extremely reliably. I'm not sure what that looks like after the, the mini rework, I imagine. She's going to still be pretty strong in the late game, probably. And then there's you got your Corky and your Sivir as well, right? So that's yeah, feeling pretty strong. It's a Riot rework, so it's, it's harder to necessarily judge. I, I think it'll still be good. Uh, it'll perhaps be a little bit different than people expect. Uh, I think they removed the extra movement speed off of her E, oh, but you get some like extra stats to go with it. So it's it's balanced. Uh, it she should be fine in this pick she's just gonna be able to fish out try and make sure that everyone's safe add some extra pokes and sustain to go with it uh, and of course just be good with the carries she has uh, of course though jinx is a very big late game monster once you get your third yeah. item here you the one of the things you have to point out here she really needs that attack speed so she either needs to get for an earlier boot or she can't necessarily go for a second item infinity edge while well, Sivir can. Because if you're not able to get these auto attacks off, your your, your Q isn't going to be as strong. You're, you're not going to get as much value. So typically mm -hmm. you end up seeing an IE third still with Jinx, which makes her a little bit weaker. But she's still able to get a lot of value from it as well. Um, if Sudden Leviathan clumps up at all, she's going to get a lot of value. 
out of a hurricane or if she ends up going with a kraken uh, phantom dancer she'll also be able to get that movement speed she needs to try and kite things out as well especially if she's excited definitely the case and they have so many tools on the side of cheese blend to mm-hmm. actually help the jinx and keep her safe right they have a great front line i'm gonna say easily the better front line between these two compositions with oh, Shen yeah. sejuani uh, and then so much support as well with the zillion you know the speed boost and the revive and seraphine with the heals uh, and the potential cc that can come through so uh, if they can keep jinx safe and if they can structure these team fights appropriately on the side of four cheese blend uh, I, I do really like their composition but it could just come down to how much poke lands from the side of leviathan but what do you think overall abba do you have a preference between these two drafts I think I'm going to give the edge to Sun Leviathan. I've seen pick comps do quite well here, just in general. Vision uh, is not necessarily the strongest amongst some of these teams. And if you're if you're in the side of a blind map, just being able to pick people off, uh, you get benefits from a lack of vision. And Sun Leviathan is going to be able to punish that uh, better than necessarily the comp that Four Cheese Blend has. All right. Well, these two teams, you know, very close in the end of the regular season, and uh, both have had pretty decent runs through the playoffs so far, but one of them will end here tonight. Sun Leviathan on the blue side with a very exciting poke comp. First pick with the new Yumi. See if the cat is as overpowered as she used to be. On the other side of things, it's Four Cheese Blend with the Jinx carry. Going to leave it all up to that bot lane, see if they can get it done. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back with the Targon Division playoffs right after this.
All right, everybody, welcome on to the Rift for game one of the night. Leviathan on the blue side, Four Cheese Blend on the red side. What's up, Chaos? See you out there in chat. No plankers in this one. Sorry there, mate. Uh, maybe in the next one. We've got Pantheon, though, in the top lane, which is going to be pretty exciting. He's running Ignite PTA, Abba. Yeah, probably just going to try and get some early kills there. It might be a little bit difficult with how Shen operates, who really just wants some of these short trades with Grasp and just going to try and play the game out. OTN when he needs to, try and protect Emerald Plastic to make sure that there's going to be alive and able to do damage. Yeah, that is the general idea of how the comp is going to work, I think. And in that vein, I actually do really like the choice from Emerald Plastic as well to go for the Ghost. Yep. Um, I think and that's going to make a lot of sense. It's going to feel really nice in those fights. Unsealed Spellbook, so we're going to get a lot of utility out of that in their Enchanter support, just being able to have mm. Exhaust or Heal or Ignite, uh, depending on the game state, and just making sure all their abilities are on cooldown uh, for their team. Yeah, we have our junglers starting on opposite sides, their respective red buffs this time around. Potentially some full clear angles, although Sejuani looks like she might be skipping the Kruggies, possibly. Yeah, I have been seeing some more like three camp style clears with how some of these games have been going. Just trying to set up an earlier play, get some value there rather than doing just like a full clear and doing some extra farming, which has been pretty interesting. I haven't seen Ooh. it pan out quite as much. A lot of damage coming really great out of Mark there. RV there into Tobis. So. Yeah, absolutely. It was Pantheon just taking over to that level two mark. Toby oh, not seeing it coming in the flash in for another W Malakor. Yeah. That's exactly how you want to play the Pantheon top, right? That's exactly what you want to be seeing. They're getting a nice slow push. They're pressuring them off the wave, forcing out a teleport like we're seeing here. So that well, normally you'd have a teleport advantage, but you don't have it. So you're not going to be losing any farm here and making sure they're forced to lose XP and extra gold as an early champion getting that first blood. Very important to try and get that value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so huge, honestly. And and I was I'm a little bit uh, surprised that Noob the Legend didn't want to make an early visit towards that top side, knowing that there's yeah. a Pantheon up there that's going to be wanting to play aggressively. I saw the Sejuani going from Raptors to Krugs, and I thought, oh, it must be a three camp into top gank, but Noob the Legend not able to find his way up there, at least not in time uh, to stop yeah. his own top laner from going down. So, Just full clears coming out here. It looks like though Spias is getting the first Scuttle Crab here, although they're not going to be able to get the second with how everything is shaping up here. Some nice potential shove-ups here for either jungler to try and follow through. Uh, Tuler is too far shoved in, so they're not going to be able to get a gank here, but there might be another fight brewing in the top side. Yeah, Malakor's going to go in with the W once again. Toby is so extremely low. Might be able to get the Execute with the Spear. Malakor really taking over in this top side. Look at Spies is there, but didn't even need to do anything. Just hanging yeah. out like, oh, hey, good job, mate. Uh, yeah, support. blood for the blood god. If if you're not able to get the six uh, as, as Shen, like, you can't stand united with your team there. Okay, Noob the Legend now looking for something in the bottom side. Ooh, almost able to make the cat very cold, but wasn't quite able to come through in time as Toadstep jumps back onto the Sivir as Spare Tracks extremely low on mana here in the mid lane. Uh, no teleport either for the Seraphine, so Corky with the push is putting Spare Tracks in a very awkward position right now. Here comes Noob the Legend, though, looking to turn things around for the mid laner, but Tuler has access to the Valkyrie and will be able to make his way to safety. Here comes Spies now in the bottom side, flashing over the Flame Chompers, but Ghost Pops for Emerald Plastic looking to get underneath that Tier 1 turret to <gasps> safety. Looks like, oh, just that last little slow from the Yumi Prowl uh, was enough to get the kill. Toad Step on the board. Yeah, and... Only one summoner had to be uh, executed here out of Spies with a Flash, which really set that up with all of some of that other movement speed. But Ember Plastic mm -hmm. had to use Ghost, Flash, and oh, their man. support had to use Heal here as well, which is super important. And with all these waves in the mid and bot side, that's going to leave you up for a potential nice back, get some of that gold spent, and set up for a future dragon fight here. And they already have a nice 1,000 gold lead here with three kills, six minutes into the game, which is what you want to be seeing with a nice lead when you pick a Pantheon. Definitely. Yeah, Malakor going to go back in with the Shield Vault once again. 
going to get uh, <laughs> Shen down to about 50%. And that's the thing with Shen, right? If he starts losing this top matchup really hard, I mean, you can still go for those Stand United plays across the map, but if you do decide to do that while you are getting bullied this much in top lane, you're basically sacking that entire turret. That would give over so much gold to the Pantheon. Uh, so we'll have to see, you know, what the options are going to look like for Toby moving forward. Yeah, we'll have to see if this goes into... Oh, that's level oh. 6 now for Malakor. He could have... He has Ignite back up on cooldown <laughs> as well. Didn't even need the Ignite. He didn't have to use a three kills in six minutes. Every two minutes, this man has gotten a kill. Absolutely fantastic. And this has forced the other top laner to get two cloth armors at this point. They're not able to su sustain this with their Dorian shield. So that means they're not going to be able to get some of their stronger items here where they're going to be able to do some more trades. They just have to, they're playing to live right now. Yeah, this is an incredible performance from Malakor up there in that top side. He is just absolutely running this early game so far as Alcalora is very comfortable down here with the kitty cat on the back. Yeah, Noob the Legend setting up for a dragon here. Okay. We'll have to see if Tool is going to be able to poke them out. Probably not with how many resources are being committed here and being caught in the ward. Uh, they're not going to be able to get it. And that's going to be the first dragon, the Wind Drake. That means no Wind right. Soul for uh, Sun Leviathan here. True. Like, would have, which would have been just kind of funny to see on them, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it would have been pretty ridic ridiculous as Tuller is pretty strong right now. Level up in the mid lane. Going to get exhausted, but still getting out quite a bit of damage onto the Seraphine. Here he comes with the oh, Gatling the Gun and the Valkyrie. The Flash away, oh, not enough to United. keep the Seraphine alive. The Stand United was attempted to be cast by Toby, but they killed the Jinx too fast as Malakor has made his way down into the bottom side with the Grand Starfall. And now the Lullaby is going to be a very sleepy zillion under the turret. And he's going to have to sleep for a little bit longer as Lilia picking up that last hit. Noob the Legend trying to get away. What is oh. this, man? The flash for the boomerang blade. Alcalora has roamed all the way up from the bot lane to go after the enemy Sejuani. That's insane. Yeah, that was a very flashy play there. Still getting some value out of that ward, but as a vulnerable carry, because you haven't your six to try and space stuff out, uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit more dangerous for you as you could potentially get caught out. So far, they haven't, which is exactly what you want to be seeing here. Just getting some good value here. Although the top and bot have changed even before yeah. any of the towers have fallen here. It looks like he says, you know what? I got three kills. I can 2v1 here. Jake's is pretty squishy. <laughs> I'm just going to kill Emerald Plastic should the uh, time arise. And they haven't hit level 6 yet. Oh, this is interesting. Um, Shen is two levels up right now. Spell Shield mm -hmm. is not appropriately timed. Does mean the cleanse has to come out from Alkalora. And now Pantheon has reset, moving back towards the top side. That means there's nobody to defend bot lane right now. So Emerald Plastic is about to get some free money as the V-Trop or the uh, high note there. Not quite enough. Not going to land onto Tuller. But Quirky, quite low. No access to the teleport right now. Noob the Legend coming into the top side, but Lily nope, is also in nope the vicinity. Not quite there yet. Even with such a crucial summoner spell. With <laughs> He's in the mid lane Glenn. now. Oh. He's in the mid lane. Oh my god. He already used the Comet Spear, but it doesn't matter. The yeah, Ignite's going to burn down that pop star. Sparrow Drake's going to go down for the second time this game. And Malakor is just all over the map. He's killing oh. everybody now. The Boomerang Blade. Oh, it's almost enough to finish off Toby under the turret there. They're under the Rift Herald now. They are giving over a very ridiculous amount of gold to this Jinx right now. Onto so a that Jinx. is uh, something that the side of Four Cheese Blend are going to feel somewhat happy about. Yeah, getting a lot of gold there, especially when you end up buying an early call on someone who's got a fairly weak laning phase. Getting that extra gold is very important here for sure. And they're already sitting at about 400-ish gold above their enemy laner. And they could potentially get a first turret here, which is going to be some nice global gold for them as well. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, Eva. And, and this is, this is honestly, I'm going to say a favorable trade for the side of 4Cheese Blend that they really had no right uh, to have access to. Uh, so just, I think that was a full turret. I think that was five plates yeah, on was that full, It was a full turret. As here comes the Grand Starfall <laughs> into the mid lane. It's going to be another kill on to spare tracks um but uh it's it's nine to zero on the scoreboard and it is a 2000 gold lead for the yeah, side of leviathan all, all of this though is on malcor right and he's gonna fall off so they have to make yeah, a decision here yeah. where are they gonna put this gold it looks like spias is a contender here with two kills and already having a dark seal 
Uh, they're going to be able to do a lot of damage, swoop in and utilize this movement speed as yeah. well. Uh, potentially, they could also put this into their carry, Alcoria, but... Uh, Alcalora getting engaged on right now has to watch out. One more auto means the Frostbite will be spell shielded, but that means it's not up for the Glacial Prison and the Flame Chompers come down. And it's going to be Emerald Plastic, the Jinx that gets the last hit. It's a double for Emerald Plastic. And just like that, it's Four Cheese Blend coming back strong in game one. Yeah, and with all those picks happening, they're not getting the spell shield up, pushing up too far, not having the vision to match them when you're that far up means you're going to be getting a double kill to the enemy team. And more importantly, just another plate here, or two plates, I should say, on to Emerald Plastic, who's yeah. had seven plates and two kills here, already sitting at 5,000 gold at 12 minutes, which is where you want to be. You're like, almost 2,000 gold ahead of your enemy carry. Oh, absolutely right. But here comes the lullaby. It is going to be a sleepy jinx, but she has the chrono shift, so she will revive underneath the tier one turret. Alkalora also pretty low. Bomb not quite going to connect, but does still do damage to the Sivir. So it's a trade of ultimates there between the Lilia and the Zillion. Fairly favorable in the trade for Zillion, as Spias has a 125 second cooldown, but Chrono mm. Shift only has an 89 second cooldown right now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the Lilia Ultimate sort of has a higher ceiling in terms of the impact it can have in team fights. Like if you get those big multi man sleeps, that yeah. can be game changing. Uh, but getting the sleep only onto one target who can then be Zillion ulted, definitely uh, not exactly what Spies is going to be looking for as we go forward. We need to get a little bit more done than that with the lullaby. Yeah, We're a little looking bit more is going to be done here. Chem Dragon here, uh, going to be kind of nice for some of the shields and healing here for whatever team ends up getting it. Uh, not okay. the most potent of all dragons, but Just this is this poke we're talking about, showing up first, yeah. trying to control the space. Getting some oh. vision, but losing a lot of the HP in order to do so. The Boomerang Blade, almost enough. And with that poke landing, they were able to push back for cheese and they're able to secure themselves uh the uh, their first dragon of the game tying up that dragon count at one to one yeah just going to be delaying soul here no one gets picked off and like i said the counter to all of this sit and wait and poke is that you're going to be having a top laner push and potentially take plates oh. here as well although Malcor is having no chill here. Yeah, there is the uh, stun coming through from Malakor. Has the ignite. Going to land the Comet Spear here. Not quite enough damage now, though. It's Topi, who's been able to build up a little bit of armor. It's new the Legend, making his way into the bottom lane. The Arctic Assault is flashed by Alcalora. Able to spell sheet the back half of the Winter's Wrath there as well. So Sivir, able to keep herself safe, but does cost the Flash. Yeah, Flash, super important on all your carries. Of course, you are still going to have Cleanse and your Spell Shield and Toad Step to try and help make sure that you're alive and safe. Both of these carries only having died once, though being down these summoners is going to be fairly crucial here. Uh, being your down, uh, your Flash, it looks like Malkor's Flash is going to be coming up here. So there might be a fight brewing here in the top lane if you want to try and dive, uh, though a little risky into a Shen at this stage. Well, Toby looking for one with the taunt forward there. And able to get some decent trades down now that he does have that armor completed. A nice little bit of health now purchased as well with the Giant's Belt and the Kindle Gem in inventory. So we already see the Pantheon starting to fall off a little bit in the side lane. It is the Divine Sunderer build as well for Malakor. So not really that much burst damage. It's a little bit more about the extended fights now with this build for the Pantheon. Looking to do potentially some frontlining for the team later on. Yeah, Pantheon's able to do some frontlining just because of their ability lineup. Once you get your stacks up and you end up using your Aegis Assault, you can kind of... Oh, no, not Aegis Assault, I should say. Uh, no, yeah, no that's right. Yeah, it is Aegis uh, Assault. Right. I always mix up his W and his E, just being able to protect people off, absorb some of these projectiles, and really set up oh. your team here. Spies, just a cheeky little, little bit of damage there onto the Shen. Not wanting to go for a lullaby underneath the turret or anything like that. As the final chapter is going to come out, and Emerald Plastic going to get rooted up. This Jinx was so fed. Oh, she has to stand united. She could get even more fed as the Super Mega Death Rocket comes out to sidestep. Good from Alcalor, but Zillion is here to cut off the escape path. It's going to be the bomb that gets the last hit, and this one, I imagine, should be given over to the Jinx. There it is. Emerald it, Plastic gets number three, and this thinks... Jinx is going to be such a huge problem for Leviathan. 
yeah, things were looking really dire for Emerald Plastic here. And, but it wasn't like they were up two levels here, which is all they needed. And their team ended up collapsing, which means that Toadstep and his carry Alcalara is getting caught out and they're dying again, which is really bad, especially when you're down 40 CS at this point. Your enemy got several plates, seven on top of this. Okay, it's going to be a 2v1. Malakor outnumbered right now. Taunt lands. Frostbite comes through, waited out the Aegis Assault there, Noob the Legend, very nice, flashed away, now Malakor trying to stay alive, needs another Comet Spear, needs a little bit more damage, the Ignite ticking, it's not going up. to be enough, as a Noob the Legend and Toby team up in the top side to take down the enemy laner. Yeah, falling off already, and they weren't able to quite get that shift. I mentioned when they were first getting all these big picks here that they might be trying to get it on Despias, but they haven't got any more kills there. They haven't got any more on Tour or anywhere else on their team. So not getting this gold transition is yeah. very, very dire for Sun Leviathan indeed. And just getting picked there, of course, also means that you passing down a 500 gold bounty so 800 mm. gold in total as well as any pressure they were able to create which just lets the enemy breathe more so four cheese is starting to look favorable into this mid game here yeah i completely agree i'm starting to like their composition the more we see of it that turret will go down Tuler is going to get taunted, though. The Valkyrie to try and build a little bit of space and has a lot of damage already on this Quirky. Toby not uh, able to continue the fight anymore. Has the sha Flash on the Shen. May have to use it. Has taunt back off cooldown. Able to save the Summoner spell there as the rest yeah. of the team trying to siege up in mid lane. Yeah, and a potential Rift Herald in the taking. Of course, Mel is going to be too far into the bot lane, trying to do some splits. So, second Herald for a bot turret, potentially a mid, if they're not going to be able to answer this push here. And with all these boomerangs bouncing about, uh, it'll at least be equalized at the very least. Uh, so, they're going to get some sort of a trade, if uh, any trade at all. They might just get a favorable push. We also have the third dragon coming up in just a couple of seconds here, and it's going to be a Hextech sold this game. So something that these teams absolutely are going to want to fight over. Abba's Malakor took like three turret shots there. I don't think he's going to be able to make it out of this one. Now it's Toby flashing forward, looking for the kill. Just needs the taunt to come back off cooldown once again. When does he have it? There it is. Toby getting a little bit more revenge on Malakor in the top side as Tuller is going to package in here. Emerald oh. Plastic, the Jinx all by herself. She felt safe because the rest of the team was in the river, but the range on the package allows uh, Tooler on the Corky to get in there, get that big kill, and in the bot side, it spies. Able to run down at the Shen with all of that movement speed. So, Leviathan fighting back very well here. They lost their top laner, but they got a kill onto the Lilia. They got a kill onto the Corky. They're going to be able to, to, I think, get this second dragon for themselves as well, but they're going to lose the mid-tier one. A lot of trading happening across the map yeah. here, Abba. A lot of trading here indeed. We'll have to see if they're able to get this Drake. It looks like they are, but they might be able to collapse on here. We'll have to see if they're able to get the mid or bot tower as well. Being that 4 Cheese was able to get the mid tower here. So trading one for one. And one more important thing to know here is that Emerald Plastic Emerald Go ended up going with a rapid fire cannon. So we talked about in the draft mm. phase how important this range advantage is going to be. And that's going to help with that, just being able to poke stuff with your rockets. Absolutely. It's Emerald Plastic, a full item ahead right now of Alcalora. Really huge on the Jinx at the moment. They did not. Uh, they were not able to secure that last dragon, though. You know, overall, in that little passage of play, who do, who do you think actually came out ahead? It was an additional kill. It was two for one for kills in favor of Leviathan. And they got... Uh, the dragon, of course, and on the other side of things, it was just that mid-tier one, really. As potent as Hex Dragon is, I don't think that second dragon is quite as valuable as that first mid turret, as that mm. really enables a lot of future plays, as well as potentially more dragons, should the game drag on long True. enough in order to get a soul at this point. Uh, Baron is going to be able to get both teams to push so much harder, and mid prio enables both of these plays. So that mid tower is more important in my book. All right. Yeah. And, and that was more money onto the Jinx, right? That uh, taking of the turret. Definitely something that the side of Porchies Blend are going to be looking to continue to do as the game progresses. Just get Emerald Plastic as much gold as possible. Going to hand off this red buff to the Jinx as well. Making a lot of sense. Yep. 
just get as much gold on sheer carries. And I, I mentioned earlier, right, like you end up having to go for an Infinity Edge third, Ooh. which really... Jumpy. Oh. I mean, the Encore comes out just clipping the Lilia there, but not able to follow up on that one just yet. Swirl Seed going to pass through the uprights. Thought there was maybe a potential for something to break out there. Not really going to be the case. Yeah, certainly a potential for that. A lot of good wave clear, though, on both sides here. So it's going to be difficult to push mm -hmm. into some of these, depending on how things line up. Uh, there is potentials for one three ones to try and decide how some of these fights are going to be going to push things around. Although that is more complicated to do on the side of Sun Leviathan as it's easy to get caught out. And if you're not super coordinated and knowing exactly how the enemy is going to be responding and lining up, that can make things quite dangerous. Absolutely. We have all of the, both ultimates for the top laners are available. So if any fights do end up breaking out, in the near future, they will be able to join from very far away. Just meeting in the bottom lane right now as we see Malakor jumping in for a little bit of a trade with Shield Vaults. Able to get the better end of it with that last Comet Spear as well. And now he yeah. has Seraphine collapsing onto him. The full collapse actually from the side of Four Cheese Blend. Looking to punish this Pantheon in the side lane. See if Malakor is going to be able to get out. He's jumping onto Sparatrax and he's flashing into the waiting arms of the Sejuani. It's going to be Toby that is able to get the last hit. But... With that huge commitment towards the bot side, the rest of Leviathan are looking towards the Baron. Do they have time is the question. They're not quite able to do enough damage here as uh, they don't have oh. two items on Sivir. Plastic is here. They're going to have to turn for the fight. Spies is going to get stunned up by the Glacial Prison. Flashing away now from the Jinx. Able to stay alive for now. But a new legend able to land the Arctic Assault onto Alkalor who flashes over the wall as well to stay alive. Toby now very deep behind enemy lines. But it's going to be Tooler that gets shut down as the Encore comes out a uh, thunderous applause for spare Trax's performance as it is two for zero in favor of Fortune's blend they could consider the baron now themselves but with some low health bars it looks like they will just settle for the fight yeah some leviathan here trying to steal from their opponent and do some nice baron cheese unfortunately that play didn't work out melkor v was able to get some nice value in that fight no thanks to the divine sunderer and the black Ooh. cleaver trying to peel for them but the other team was just able to rotate and know what the enemy team's doing thanks to some of this vision oh, setup dear. that's been done. And they're not going to be able to get that Baron because they've been sacrificing gold on their carries. They weren't able to get that transition from Malkor V onto some of these more potent damage dealers. That's right. Yeah, it's Sivir very much behind the curve of the game right now. Quirky is pretty strong. Uh, yeah. Has a couple of items completed. Definitely those rockets are hurting. Um, but we uh, did see some cooldowns expended a moment ago by the side of Leviathan looking for a pick in the mid lane. Weren't able to find one. Now it is going to be River Control held by Four Cheese Blend. See if they're going to be able to hold on to it, maintain control over the area. This is something that we said their draft was going to be pretty good at, right? Coming out of the champion select phase. So see how this standoff looks in the bot side river. It's a 5v5 as Leviathan are trying to push in from the bottom lane. A Tuller stepping forward, trying to land this poke, trying to get out these rockets the zone control is good but the side of Fortune's blend have not been willing to start up the objective just yet just giving tooler more time to land these rockets right now giving more time for spies to look for the swirl seeds look for these big sleeps is a possibility lilia no flash available but can step forward gonna get tagged by the encore though the cc about to come out but package over the top as corky goes into the back line toby pretty low in the front here is corky able to get a couple of kills it's the side of leviathan that are winning out in the fight is enough poke did come through the engage was good and they went out in the fight they're gonna secure hex tech soul points yeah very well played here they waited for these abilities to come out waited for four cheese to commit to a dragon and the moment we saw that encore encore tour was able to bypass it and stick onto these important carries here and they weren't able to get it uh, they weren't able to use their double smite that they have as well on four cheese. And because there's some more damage here, they might be able to take the Baron. They're going to have a little bit more time as they're going to have to respond to some of these waves potentially on the side of four cheese. And they have to wait for some of these death timers. Of course, Hextech Gates lets you get there faster should you want to forego your waves despite top and bot pushing. Oh, oh, oh my oh, gosh! Oh, the steal of the century! Southeek flashing into the pit will get the steal. He has the Chrono Shift to buy a little bit of time now. Uh, he already used the flash, so no way out now for the Zillion. Uh, but oh, an, an so incredible good. clutch play there from Jalfik. Yeah, oh my 
goodness, that was fantastic. It's not every day you get to see the support steal, but they had smite because of unsealed spellbook. So just having those spells on rotations, like I said at the beginning, just being able to use those, super important for your team. Not necessarily the prediction I was going for, but you know, you'll take a W when you get one. Yeah, absolutely huge for Chalfik, able to get that big steal. It was off the back of some great play from Leviathan, right? You know, it was Tuller flying into the back line, able to take out Emerald Plastic in that dragon fight in the bot side river. Uh, but now Jalfik with that huge play, you know, they're still going to have to worry about this possibility of the Hex Soul in three and a half minutes, but should be able to secure quite a bit of gold for themselves with this Baron power play. See just how much as the Shirelias comes out looking to play aggressively here in the top lane. Alcalora could be the target. Yeah, Melkor going into the bot here means they're going to be at a numbers disadvantage. And four cheese can 1v1 or potentially 2v1 just to hold him. But I think the 1v1 should be fine as they're going to have a stronger siege with the Baron buff. Not to mention they're also going to have some nice dive as they have a better front line here that they can commit. And don't forget yeah. that Toby well, can't That's a lot of damage sure. onto the Jinx right there. Siege may have to end after that tier 2 turret. Emerald Plastic can't really stick around safely. It's like one more Corky Rocket could be the end of the Jinx. As Malakor also has to be careful. The rest of 4 Cheese Blend backing off in the mid lane. Pantheon does not want to get collapsed on again. Not with an objective uh, not available on the other side of the map for the team to look for. Yeah, it's super crucial that these carries stay alive. Emerald Plastic has their third item, working in the fourth, having the Infinity Edge, and getting all of this XP thanks to the Zillion pick. Just being able to get that there as well. And they're going to be able to protect against some of the CC here with the Mikhail's Blessing, mm -hmm. making sure everyone's going to be nice and healthy. And let's not forget that Noob the Legends build here is going to be super tanky and it's going to have some nice sustain for the team as well when there's no heal cut to be facing here, despite them just naturally Ooh. having S Seraphine's heal and the, the items they're building as well. Yeah, definitely. That's a big purchase. Able to keep Emerald Plastic safe from those lullabies or any potential Pantheon stuns that could come through. Uh, it does make a lot of sense, especially in the context of this composition. That's exactly what Jolfeek needs to do, right? Just keep Jinx safe by any means necessary. Trying to get a little bit of vision control down now in the enemy topside jungle. Uh, it's going to be a while till Baron spawns again, but just looking to put some pressure on this top tier two. Spies? Thought it was going to get locked up by the double bomb there, but Lilia with the movement speed able to sidestep that. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure being exerted here into the mid and bot side coming out of Sun Leviathan, but some nice counter pressure coming to the top side from Four Cheese committing a lot of people here. Yeah. And if you're able to commit one person just to stop these other two pushes, you can really push in to these other sides here as one person cannot defend this tower into the top side. Yeah, this tower is looking like it might go down. However, the Hex Soul is spawning in 40 seconds. So, uh, and the, the minion wave is going to get cleared out. That's the power of Siva, right? Alcalora able to take out the minion wave. And the side of Forchi's blend not able to secure that turret in the top side. Now they're going to have to reset, try and contest in this bot side river. But we already see Spies and Toadstep in position to take control over this area. Forchi's blend looking to move in now. Yeah, Emerald Plastic is ready for this fight, already having a Hex Drinker, just trying oh, to man. stop any and all AP damage, just getting in an extra lifeline, an extra 188 shielding here, just to try and stay safe from all of this poke. Uh, this is going to be an important objective here if they are able to get Soul right. on the side of... To uh, level 16 I... on the Corky with the package in tow. Spare Tracks already down to 50% on the Seraphine package, forced out defensively, but Noob the Legend taking so much damage from the package and from these rockets. Seraphine and Sejuani both... Very, very low. Swirlseed going to go just wide there, but here comes Pantheon. The Grand Starfall is good. Seraphine going to get taken out immediately as Corky lands another rocket, and Toby Swirls going to be the next to fall. It's already two dead on the side of Forge. He's blend as Leviathan, smelling blood in the water. They press forward, and uh, Melkor flashing in, looking to get another stun. They take out the Sejuani. They take out the Zillion. It's only Emerald Plastic left alive. The Chrono Ship will buy a moment, but only a moment as Leviathan finds the clean five for zero, and they could look for a lot more. Yeah, they could look for a lot more. 
here, able to push stuff up, potentially end as the longer this game goes, the longer the death timers. It's 15 seconds before their yeah. mid laner is going to be able to come up. And Jinx Emerald Plastic has the best clear here. And with the inhib already down, and you have 20 seconds until you're up, this could be the game. Just getting those I picks. I think it will be, Abba, with everybody still alive. They had more than enough damage for these structures. The Encore comes out from Spare Tracks, trying to buy just a little bit more time. Toby desperately moving forward, looking to taunt up one of these auto attackers, not able to do it. The first Nexus will fall, and Leviathan take game number one. Yeah, very well played. I loved four cheeses macro. They're able to get some nice counter pushes, some nice steals there as well but in the end it went to sun leviathan and they were able to get some nice picks they were able to make sure that their damage landed on these important carries we saw that emerald ended up dying they were able to do a lot get a lot of gold funneled into them but their death was so key as well that it ended up getting them a loss yeah absolutely the case it was just a really clean engage from Malachor really setting that one up with the Grand Star, while the Pantheon getting things started right in the early game, able to find those solo kills in topside. And then, honestly, what I want to say is, is the game game winning angle there, flying in from the side with the Grand Star, while able to get the collapse on Four Cheese Blend, coming from an angle that they weren't expecting, right? They weren't able to keep their carries safe. Uh, and it was just the extended chase down with all of this movement speed that we also called out from the draft ABBA. Uh, that Leviathan were able to utilize to get that huge, huge team fight win, and then the push to end. Uh, what, what, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this one overall? I think that this game was admirably fought by both teams, but just being able to get some of those early winning lanes really helped. And once they were able to get that Pantheon ahead, it really helped that. Of course, the mid game fell through a little bit, but that late game kind of opened up with how Tool was able to play, get some important picks along with Malkor V, and that just set up all of these fights uh, to secure all these objectives. Of course, some of them weren't secured as there was a nice Baron steal in this game, but yeah. in the end, in the end here, all of these picks resulted in a clean ace, which resulted yeah. into a Nexus push, despite there being, what, was like two towers, an inhib, and then the Nexus towers there. They were pushed that through just after one fight. In the end, it... Okay, never mind. Um, but yeah, on to player of the game, Abba. That's the last thing we really need to consider before we go to a yeah. short break. Um, definitely some strong contenders. Spies, Deathless on the yeah. Lilio, 6-0-6. Six, six. Uh, great like... performance there. Tooler landing so many of those rockets in those critical moments. Yumi think, doing Yumi things? I think Tuller is the pick, and here's why. Uh, so we got a lot off of the top side out of Sun Leviathan here, but Tuller was good throughout the entire game, able to get some solo bow mm. kills on their own, was able to get some counter picks here as well, and they were able to peel some of these big boy tanks, just being able to cut through them so they weren't able to frontline, and of course, landing damage in their backline as well, securing that as well. And they were able to just push some lanes on their own as well. So throughout the game, having a very strong performance. Absolutely. I like it. Tuller uh, scaling up a very, very comfortably in that mid lane, playing out the fights extremely well. Target selection, definitely on point for the Corky, as well as the accuracy with those rockets. Most damage in the game as well, uh, which, you know, pretty easy to accomplish when you're playing Corky, but still. Uh, nice to shout that out. 26.5K for Tuller in this one. 31 minutes exactly on the game clock as the Nexus did explode. And now we will have to see what four cheese blend have in their back pocket. It's time to pull that ace out of the sleeve, leave everything on the rift. Anything that they have, it's time to pull it out because it's now or never. If they don't win this next game, their season will be over. Ada, it'll be out for them. We'll see if they can pull it back, guys. We're going to go to a short break, but don't go anywhere. We will soon return with the all-important Game 2.
Okay, everybody, welcome back from what was a very short break. We're going to be getting into our Game 2 draft pretty shortly here. The teams are just about ready. We have swapped sides for Game 2. It's going to be 4 Cheese Blend electing to move on over to the blue side. And Leviathan on the red now for this second game. Abba, what other adaptations do you think we need to see in the drafting phase for Poor Cheese Blend uh, to make the second game go a little bit more in their favor? Uh, one, don't put all your damage into the AD carry. Uh, protect comps are a little bit more difficult to go through. They did very well, but if you just make one mistake, that can be game ending. On top of which, uh, I think just being able to get some better rotations in through the mid lane is going to help enable them. So maybe just some more wave push in their composition could be nice to help them out as well as just making sure that they're able to get a nice priority pick on t onto their team. Uh, the Sejuani potentially there was very good at peeling and getting some picks there. So I think that pick might just be uh, around one pick for four cheese. Yeah, definitely could be an angle. You know, it wasn't enough to get them the win in the last game, but I do agree that Noob Legend had a good performance on the Sejuani. Uh, and, you know, it is, is a good pick in the meta right now as well. So could see that come through. Um, and, you know, I, I do think that... Um, oh, hang on a second. Um, am I am I trolling? The Sejuani did not win the first game, right? Yeah. No, Sejuani right. did not win the first game. Uh, the Lily Lilia ended up winning because it was the movement speed team. Exactly, exactly right there. So uh, we'll see if that is going to end up uh, coming through. But I do think it's it's really important to kind of consider emerald plastic. You know, as as well. You know, you're kind of uh, talking about the importance of securing those priority picks. And the Jinx was good, but uh, it's it's not necessarily the most meta of picks right now, right, Jinx? She did receive a couple of small buffs on this current patch. You know, the uh, Super Mega Death Rocket damage to monsters is once again uncapped, I believe. So, or the cap yeah. at least was increased um, up to twelve hundred. I, I think it was. So I, I, I don't quite good, remember. But... I haven't. I haven't paid too much attention to Jinx. Uh, it's. I just see a lot more potential out of some other hyper carries. Like, yeah. Imagine exactly. if Jinx, uh, instead of Jinx, who had like a Zaya there, it was a lot harder for them to go in. You have a lot more peel with their feather pull. You have a lot of damage. You're still able to do a lot of these plays as well. Of course, you're going to be sacrificing some of the range that you might be needing. But with all how much frontline you had there, that might not have mattered. And they were going to be able to just follow up through there and get some picks of their own as well. Yeah, definitely the case. So I'm wondering if we do end up seeing a different look this game for Emerald Plastic or if it will just be sort of a similar strategy that they try to run back because the game was certainly looking winnable until it wasn't, right? Like, it's not like they were they were losing the whole time. No, it was like a 2,000 gold difference for great a majority of the game. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so now taking a look at what these bans are, the missing <laughs> ban in the previous game for Leviathan uh, is going to be the Yumi. So that will be denied this time around. It was first picked by Leviathan on blue side, of course, not wanting to give that option over to Four Cheese Blend. So instead it will be the Swain. The Swain locked in on B1 for Four Cheese. I've seen Swain work pretty well in some of these setups. When I was watching that uh, Fiddle match up that Four Cheese was ending up doing, it was basically who could suck harder, uh, Fiddle Sticks or Swain. So they were able to uh, get some nice picks up through there. I've seen Swain do relatively well. Some nice setup. You're able to get some nice uh, vision with your W. If you have to end up base checking, you got some nice range trying to see if anyone's there. Basically, just a free far sight. Of course, it's got like a 20 second cooldown, but way, way lower than a normal far sight. And just like we saw uh, last game, uh, Lily is going to be banned here because of how strong mm. uh, Spires was. Uh, so maybe they thought they were the MVP of that game. Yeah, I mean, six and zero and six, I believe, on the yeah. Lilia. So it was a great performance for sure. Going to be on another four-legged option this time around in the Hecarim. And now it's going to be the Tristana grabbed up as well by Leviathan for Alkalura this time. A little bit of a more aggressive look, uh, it looks like, in the bottom side this time for game two. Yeah, they are going in. You're going to be having your nice hop in there. Hecarim's Fear just going in, disrupting things. And of course, you can just be knocked around like a ping pong ball uh, with Tristana's ultimate as well, just being able to do a little bit of bowling of their own. You can set things up with that champion. 
uh, if you hit S, you can delay how far the auto is going to go to decide when the bomb is going to blow up if you have it set up for the fourth shot. Definitely, definitely. Leviathan already with just these first two picks. Very good at going in. Um, but the problem here, Eva, is that uh, Forchies Blend are very good at at letting people go into them. Um, yeah. They're actually really happy about, you know, that, that kind of situation. You know, Swain, going to be able to get a ton of value that way. Uh, Tom Kench and Ezreal, very, very safe picks down there for the bottom lane. They should be able to peel back very nicely. And so... It'll be interesting to see if Leviathan now go for some kind of pivot with their strategy. If they look for a little bit of a more uh, neutral composition instead of indexing fully into dive. Yeah, Tristana can play front to back uh, rather than just dive. You get some nice resets. You're able to cycle through once that front line's going through. But it's a little bit more difficult if you end up having a Tom Kench support or a, a Swain because they can just pull you around, jump you around, and really just stick onto you and screw up part of your game plan as well as just have some general healing as well so uh, pretty important of course tristana has one of the stronger level ones of uh, other ad carries is right up there with Callista. uh ezreal is also pretty strong into there as well so some some potent level ones to watch out for some hp is going to be exchanging hands and if you have a Seraphine support, uh, just being able to trade some HP with that healing is going to be favorable for you. And of course, you can just get some shielding there as well. Although yours isn't going to be as sustainable as a Soraka or a Sona, just because those cooldowns are longer and you're more damage oriented as a, as a kit. Absolutely, yes. As you say, the Seraphine going to be picked up. Once again in this one, she swapped sides. She's on the side of Leviathan this time around. Uh, see uh, what... Uh, the side of Toad Steps going to be able to do with the pick. Into the second phase of bands no, now, though, top laners are the focus. It's going to be Orn and Shen, removed by Leviathan. So uh, Shen, you know, another situation here where the pick wasn't able to get the win, but Toby played reasonably well on it and uh, was able to fight back well in the top lane after what was a pretty disastrous early game against the Pantheon. So just going to oh. remove that comfort option and the Corky. Yeah, also, the Corky uh, got banned. Yeah, game, of course. It was pretty sick, nasty. There are no more Yordles here. Of course, there's other Yordles to pick here, but Corky and Tristana being some of the bigger ones. I don't predict a Poppy Vagar or angle? Pick up. Or Vi oh, yeah, Vagar. Vagar would actually be an interesting choice. Uh, yeah. There's some Escape with Arcane Ooh. Shift, of course, and Tom Kench's abilities as well. Although, we, with how this is going, we might have a Seraphine mid again with a potential Sona pick. Yeah, the yeah. other possibility here, Abba, is that it could be a Seraphine Sona bot lane and Tristana mid. That um, is true. I do think Seraphine and Sona would be pretty happy into Ezreal Tom Kench, just kind of sitting there, scaling up, you know, poking Tom Kench with their abilities, getting those Spell Thief stacks for the Sona nice and early. Uh, and then Tristana should be able to pressure Swain a little bit in the mid lane. So that's kind of what I would anticipate, actually. Yeah, uh, certainly. That that could be a potential there, just being able to rotate. That flexibility really does help in the draft phase because it forces your opponent to make some choices here when you're on the blue side because you get the counter pick and you ultimately get to decide how these lanes mm -hmm. are going to be going up. Of course, you could make some more difficult choices here with some more flexible picks here as well. But it looks fairly rigid coming out of four cheese blend here. We oh, kind of know where is. everyone's going to be sitting. The tiny master of evil will make his appearance on the rift for the second game. And Which... now our five pick for Leviathan in the top side. What is Malakor going to go oh, for yeah. oh, this uh, time around? Heck yeah, man. Like, I've seen this man just decimate teams. Because mm. uh, like, a lot of the appeal to four cheese blend is you're just going to CC, make sure some of their damage stays safe, and Olaf just doesn't care. He's just going to Ragnarok and go and hit things. Of course, Arcane Shift and some of these other abilities are going to help peel stuff away. But if he gets on top of someone and forces any of these mobilities out, you are going to take a beating. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Olaf is, is a pick that I feel like we've actually been seeing rise in priority in the professional scene as well you know we've seen it a few times now in the lec you know adam of course very well known for the olaf pocket pick but i think some other players actually have started picking it up as well and i think it's been played a little bit in the lpl also i'm not 100 sure about that but uh olaf yeah. definitely something that we're seeing a fair amount in the top lane these days and 
I uh, do think it as a very good matchup into the Zac for sure. Yeah, and it's potentially why they left open a Mordekaiser, uh, which I believe was banned last game because Olaf just absolutely decimates that matchup trying to bait them in saying hey it's free you want to take it you want to take it it's a nice quick pusher <laughs> but ultimately that's not what ended up happening but Elker V we saw what they did with an early game champion they were able to just kind of go around the map switch with lanes yeah. uh, was it the best switches on their part uh, in my opinion but with Olaf you have a very strong early game Oh, for sure. Going to be looking for that early advantage over Toby in the top lane once again. And this time around, Toby is not going to have access to that global ultimate, that Stand United, uh, that yeah. they were able to utilize in the previous game to try and get some fights going back in favor of Gorgie's blend, right? The Stand United usage was fantastic uh, for the most fantastic. part in that previous game. But yeah. uh, this time around, Zach, if he gets ends up getting isolated in this top 1v1, could be disastrous for Gorgie's. It could be disastrous uh, with how things Take go. Take a look at oh. this, guys. Yeah, but, I mean, there's still time for things to switch around. They got until the 30-second mark, but uh, usually it's just pick wherever our slot you're in. And the early swaying, uh, I, that's not favorable uh, into an Olaf. Yeah, that's a great flex. Sending the swain into the top lane, Zach into the jungle. Yep, um, I would have Expecting Zack into the jungle, you just have so many gank angles, and if you don't know how to ward against the Zack, you just get so punished. I've seen so much value come out of him as a jungler just because of the, the angles that they come from and just the amount of CC they're able to get people in, especially if they can just keep you into a Vigar cage or just make sure all these abilities get landed. That's actually so silly. I don't know why I thought that Zack was top lane. Zack is obviously the only champion on this team that can go jungle. So a little bit of a brain fart there from me. So but um, I've seen it. There was a guy who had masters with Zack top. You just no, walk like, back into the fog of, of vision and just go in. I know Zack top is a thing, but like Swain jungle is not a thing. Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in this case, Zack is the only champion in this draft that can go jungle. For four uh, cheese. So. I don't know. I have lost to a uh, Grandmaster Vigar jungle. <laughs> okay. It wasn't. It wasn't just like norms <laughs> or whatever. But I was like, God damn! Like, have some chill, man. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Uh, don't think we're going to be seeing that this time around, no. though, but Thankfully, <laughs> uh, it is going to be new. The legend on the Zach and Toby on the Swain. Potentially, they're swapping it around on us. They're doing the swapping. We're just gonna have to wait and see. I think. Uh, I mean, if you were on the side of four cheese blend, who would you want to send into the Olaf? Probably Swain, right? I mean, that seems like a good matchup for Swain. Uh, I don't think it's super great for Swain, as the as your damage is just kind of some nice trades, but Olaf just kind of slows and walks and hits you on repeat. Mm. Tom Kench is going to be able to get out just a little bit with their W as well, and they do have a slow on their own, so they're going to be able to peel Olaf away, and you have so much HP to play with and some HP regen, so you're going to be able to take some more abuse from okay. him. I think Tom Kench top would be better here, uh, for sure. All right, then. That is going to be the call for Toby. See if he can be able to stand up a little bit better this time around in that early game against uh, the very menacing Malakor. You know, taking the junglers into account now as well, Abba, Zack, and Hecarim, both champions that can find early plays, although Zack, I think, a little bit more... Uh, prone to looking for that sort of thing. Hecarim, generally speaking, wanting to get towards that first item, get towards that level six yep. uh, relatively quickly. But uh, do you think the junglers are going to be active early on at all in this one, Abba? And if so, where do you think they're going to be looking to affect? So both junglers have a potential for like a quadrant clear into an early gank. But a lot of this season has been more of just like full clear into a potential set up and try and get something there they might just be waiting to respond or waiting until they get some nice gold to really set up plays on their own uh of course like tom zach has some good setup but you're into an olaf which isn't great uh you can try and get a nice setup with a vigar but tristana into these mid games once you hit level six it's going to be a little bit harder and it takes a little bit for some of these uh ccs to land and you can buffer your rocket jump away as well which makes things difficult and on the opposite side uh, Swain Ezreal is just so hard to gank as well. Vigar has that cage and Tom Kench can gank away as well. So it might just be a bit of a farm fest. See who's like overextending and just punish that side. 
Yeah, absolutely. See if uh, that is going to end up coming through. Do you have a prediction for us in this second game, Abba? You know, is is it going to be Leviathan with able to claim the two zero? Is Four Cheese able to fight back? I think Four Cheese has a very strong contention to be able to fight back. They still have a good front line. Of course, uh, the other side has a good front line as well, but Viger and Ezreal are able to play safe from afar and get a lot of the burst damage that they need and really utilize the follow-up that their team has as well and has good answers to the engage. Uh, if Olaf doesn't get super far ahead like in the last game, it's going to be a lot harder for Sun Leviathan to really carry this through into the mid and late game. All right, definitely some strong carry threats on 4Cheese this time around with the Vagar, with the Ezreal. Should be able to get out a lot of damage as we move towards those mid and later stages. But maybe Leviathan will be able to snowball the early game once again and find that convincing team fight that they need to get the victory. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back onto the Rift with Game 2 in just a moment. All right, everyone, welcome back. Back onto the rift we go for game two. Forgey's blend on the blue side this time around, going for an aggressive look at the level one mark, but spotted out immediately by Alphalora, able to get a little bit of uh, vision down there. Or uh, Toe Step, actually, I think was the one who dropped that ward, excuse me. But regardless, that level one attempt from Forgey's will be stymied, and uh, it's going to be 
nothing much happening here in the first couple of minutes. Any runes or summoner spells that you are finding to be interesting, worthy of pointing out here, Mr. Abba? Uh, Hail of Blades means Tula isn't going to be able to scale quite as well, but they're going to be able to get that bomb off right away. So they're going to be stronger earlier into this game. So they're not going to be having as much uh, range or uh, or attack speed with Lethal Tempo. So they're not going to be quite as strong into the late game as you normally see on a Tristana here. And the double summon area means they're going to have the guaranteed poke. They're not going to be able to arcane shift away from a comet in this scenario as well. So there's going to be a little less instant damage, but it's going to be guaranteed damage on the other side, which is going to be quite nice for them. Yeah, okay. That's making a lot of sense for the Sona Seraphine lane for sure. And I do think that the Hail of, Blade, Hail of Blades, excuse me, uh, choice for Tuler also makes some sense. It seems like in a lane like this, uh, Tristana's main job is to try to keep Vagar down for as long as possible, right? So as much pressure as you can put on in the early game, the better it is going to be as Malakor is picking oh, no. up exactly where he left off at the end of game one. Uh, getting a very, very nice trade up there in the 1v1, just like we saw in the previous game. Spare tracks, yeah, getting jumped on. There's the level two coming through for Tuler, able to get a nice trade in mid as well. Both solo lanes for Leviathan, off to a great start. Oh, the ghost. Already looking for it. Has the axe cool down back? The flash away from Toby. Unbelievable. Malakor already so threatening. Yeah, just axing him there to leave. <laughs> Getting a lot of damage through there. The Dorian shield not being quite enough. And this is a Tom Kench we're talking about with Grasp, who's just going to be able to like trade kind of nice and get some HP. Although there's a fight in the bot lane Ooh. here. Potentially just some nice poke here as well. And we're getting that value I was talking about just off of their keystone oh, yeah. guaranteed damage. And you want to be able to engage it as Swain. So being oh, low wow. is not good. And utilizing that range here is super important when you have a double enchanters. Look at this too. Uh, Tuler has pushed in the mid wave and is now roaming into the jungle. Also in the top lane, we're seeing Tom Kent starting to fight back a little bit as Tuler is going to go in for this. It's going to just rocket jump on top of this. Oh. oh. I thought close, he was close. actually going to go for the all-in onto the Zack, but just trying to steal away the blue with a cheeky auto attack. Not able to find it as Spies making his way into this top side. Malakor going to be able to land the Axe Flash with a reckless swing. And Malakor once again picks up the first blood. Assisted this time, but still. Malakor yeah. once again with a great start. And Alkalora and Toadstep down here doing a fantastic job as well with the double Enchanter lane. They, you think Ezreal's a poke champion? <laughs> nah. Nah, now, without the therapy. healing, like, what's, what's poke? Poke lanes lose to sustain just because you're able to yeah. heal it so much more. Sustain lanes are so good at trading that it's very favorable. For oh, them. my goodness. Tuler is going in. Has Flash going to flash out of the event horizon. The bomb's oh. going to finish the job. Tuler with easy solo in mid. The little Vagar just didn't have a chance there. Spare tracks expending the Flash as well. Not able to stay alive. There comes Hecarim. Oh, never mind. There goes Hecarim. Yeah, this is kind of what we were expecting here with a stronger early game out of both of these uh, mid and top laners here. So they wouldn't necessarily have to worry or be concerned as much about transitioning the gold being Tuler also is just going to be scaling pretty well here. Uh, however... In the bot lane, Emerald Plastic, who scales quite well here, uh, kind of needs to get a nice bounce back here. They're getting kind of low. And if they're not able to get this shoved in and the wave stays where they're at, they're going to be very vulnerable to a Spy Skank, who has Ghost up and... Oh. That's a lot of damage onto Jao Feek as Alkalora oh. moving forward, looking for just a little bit more. See, Emerald Plastic fighting back. Arcane shifting forward now, looking for a little bit more damage onto the Sona. Oh, but the beat drop comes out the high oh. note, and Alkalora is able to get the kill. Mystic shot blocked by a minion there. It's Emerald Plastic able to find the auto attack, but Alkalora and Toad Step doing phenomenally well in this bot 2v2. A full court press in the early game for Leviathan. As Spies was even able to secure the double scuttle crab. I did notice, uh, Abba, that the Olaf is down a little bit in XP now. The teleport diff, uh, allowing Tom Kench to get back to lane really quickly after that death, able to pick up a big minion wave. And I think the Catfish actually will be first to level six in this top lane. Yeah, and it can be quite potent there. Of course, Ragnarok doesn't really care. Uh, so I'm not sure if that damage goes through. I don't think it does. I'm not as familiar with this exact matchup in the top lane. Uh, 
But nonetheless, mm. Olaf is probably just going to be strong at level six, just getting some of those extra stats on him. Super important. Should be getting it relatively close to six with how these waves are managing. Probably just next wave, and we'll see it. And okay, two are going to sidestep the Dark Matter. And Vagar, yeah. pretty low, low mana. Yeah, or uh, mana, I mean. Yes, that's yeah, exactly low what mana I meant here. to say. Yeah. And it's going to be a play here at least, right? It is, yes. To it, this is exactly what Tristana wants to be doing in this lane, just keeping the pressure on, getting these waves shoved in, not yeah. allowing the Vagar to farm comfortably. Well, and one of the other important things to note here is she's really good at taking towers, but you don't want to do that because they're going to be able to get some farm there and be able to farm safer mm. because you're going to be so much closer here. And that's going to make mid lane even more safe. Something you might not necessarily think is possible, but with that okay, tower This gun, is that level six advantage has come through for Tom Kench. Olaf, no Ragnarok available just that's going to be spit up, not quite into the turret range, but it might not matter as Malakor desperately trying to fight back has the oh my God! on the ax and is able to turn things around. There's that Olaf passive coming <laughs> into effect, able to finish off that kill with the double axe and the reckless swing. Malakor looked like he was in trouble there, but just barely able to turn things around. Gonna get a plate now as well. Yeah, getting a kill and a plate there. As Olaf, do you need any more gold? The extra longsword, putting in a nice amount of work there. And of course, just getting more shielding the lower health you are really sets that play up there. I, you know, I thought he was a goner there, but Olaf yeah, is a great deceiver here uh, with his HP bar. Yeah, definitely. It was looking real good for Toby Swirls, and I'm sure that Tom Kench thought he was about to win out in that one as well. Here comes Zach going to look for the steal. Can he find it? He can! The smite is... The steal comes through from Noob the Legend, but now the onslaught of Shadows onto the bottom lane, and Emerald Plastic and Jalfi get absolutely evaporated. And now the reset on the Rocket Jump Tooler jumping oh. forward. The exhaust comes through from Spare Tracks, trying to create a little bit of space here. Zach's going to come in with the slingshot, but now Noob the Legend could be the next target. Zach will be able to get out as the event horizon comes back off cooldown and the disengage will be good. The dragon steel comes through, but four cheese lose two. Yeah, the steel there, quite nice, but losing two characters at this point, uh, very important. It's going to make it easier for Sun Leviathan to just get some more gold advantage on there as well as a potential XP advantage, depending if they how these waves are going to be bouncing, if you're able to get a nice free setup, or if you just get a nice crash there and a good reset. They're going to want to be able to spend this money that they just got. Yeah, absolutely the case. As Alcalora in trouble has to flash away. It's Emerald Plastic with a level 6 advantage down here on the bottom side. True Shop Barrage oh. already on cooldown. Toad Step is going to drop in <laughs> Malakor under the turret in top lane. Gets the kill. Does end up trading himself. Tom Kench doesn't quite have the TP back yet, so I'm going to say worth for the Olaf. Yeah, getting a nice bounce back there. Of course, I believe there's a shutdown on there for an extra 150, which is a nice little bonus here, if you will. Uh, although, True. very well played there. Is oh, it oh, see Strict getting pushed yeah, yeah, the out push here? And he flashes but out of the event horizon. Oh, oh, if only Tuler had Triumph in the runes, would have been able to survive that last turret shot. But again, it will be a trade, and... That one, I'm not so sure if it's worth for Leviathan as Vagar <laughs> getting some early gold uh, is, is going to be a, a slightly concerning. But he did get a nice crash there, which is going to help as well, denying those minions. But generally, if you're getting a even tr kill trade on a better scaler, that g that's generally better for you. Oh, oh, that's the crescendo going to come out. Oh, no demonic ascension yet. Jalfik not level six. The encore oh. is going to finish him off. Alcalora able to take him down. As that is so much damage onto Toadstep, who's able to flash away, expending both summoners, able to stay alive now. Alcalora in a 1v1 with the Ezreal. One more high note. Can't quite land. Emerald Plastic looking to make his way back out under the turret, but can't escape from the auto attack as Alcalora locks it down. Four and zero now on the pop star. Yeah, with all this music in the bot lane, you'd think there would be a bard here, but that's not quite mm. the case. Although nice it looks like they're going to get caught out. Flash. Yeah, uh, no primordial burst, though. means he can't actually just execute either one of these these enchanters. Yeah. As once again, the top laner is going for a 1v1 to the death. Oh, uh, the axe. He has it back. The shield, is it enough? Oh, not quite. The turret shot comes through. And the lick puts Malakor also extremely low. Spies, the jungler, the Hecarim is onto the Herald, and look at this mid turret. I, I swear to 
this thing had four plates yeah. a second yeah, ago, Abba. What happened just, to all of I was thinking the same thing here, but Tuller just oh, eats dear. plates here, although we we're seeing a nice available. dive. Yeah, Spy's not quite able to land that first rampage, but yeah, and Tom Kench is going to be tanky enough to escape underneath the tier oh. two, but a small consolation, I think, as this tier one is yeah. in a whole heap of trouble. Oh, yeah, top tower definitely going down with the Rift Hill just sneaking by here. We we haven't been even been able to talk about some of the macro plays here with all of the fighting happening here. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful buffer on the rocket jump there from Tuller. Sidesteps the never move as well. That's going to be some additional cooldowns committed from Noob the Legend. They will eventually get the kill, and Emerald Plastic does pick up the money. But Tuller uh, doing everything that they can in that situation, trying to outplay it, wasn't quite enough. Yeah, a lot of the picks that four cheese has been able to do is because of summoner spells they've been able to get it because of the exhaust not getting enough damage uh through on the other side or because of the extra movement speed and then of course there's been some nice follow-ups with some collapses as well but still the gold and cs oh, that's a ghosting heck rim yeah that's a devastating charge spare tracks going to be able to flash away to try and stay alive and now zach is here with the slingshot they're going to turn it around onto the olaf malachor goes down a nice crescendo onto two the spies half the damage it's divine sunderer sunderer heck rim. he's oh he is able to get the sustain the healing is good from spies and with the sona there as well to keep him topped off they're going to be able to get noob into the passive as well as that kill onto jalfika's oh toad step oh, oh Although Tuller just comes out of nowhere, flies in from off screen and grabs himself a double kill. Yeah, that was very clever by Tuller here, waiting for the clumps to come in here because whenever you kill something, you get that AOE damage. And because everything was so close, they ended oh, up getting man. all of that to pop off and hit all of them at once, which just killed Noob the Legend here, getting the mid tower here as well and getting a second or the, the second dragon here, not their second dragon, but the second of the game here. Yeah, really, really huge. Uh, the the only thing that uh, Fortune's Blend really had thus far in this game was that first dragon, and now oh, with that dragon ocean. count getting equalized. Oh, the ocean <laughs> soul. <laughs> oh, Both teams are, like, thirsting over this ocean, Drake. True. Like, you have the Tom Kench and the Zach who just absolutely love it of course and then their mid laner is going to be fairly mana hungry here as well well actually their team is just kind of mana hungry which helps yeah. them but with malcor and spice they also Ooh. really want this Ooh, primordial burst not quite available oh that was just seconds away. off cooldown for spare tracks but tuller oh. oh the true shot barrage just going to miss there as well buster shot did have to be committed it was a nice uh cage from spare tracks to be able to lock down the tristana like that yeah, so they're just, just uh, greedily out. looking for more plates down there. Almost punished. Yeah, they're not going to be able to get it with 15 seconds left. The early game is coming to a close and such a commanding mm -hmm. lead. It is. We didn't it see is. it this much into the first game, but the second game, they're really getting into their groove. They really are. Uh, they have control now over this topside river. So, uh, I believe uh, was a second Herald. Is it going to be uh, spawning? Still a couple minutes on that one. So uh, just maintaining control over the area for now. Yeah. Spy's able to get some counter jungling done in Tom Kench's face right there. Yeah. With the extra level lead, that's not going to be too difficult to do here. Although with some uh, CC lined up. Here comes Malakor, Ghost Ragnarok, Jalfik not going to be able to escape from this one. Here comes Noob the Legend, though. Looking for a little bit of CC Ooh. onto the Enchanters, but not going to happen <laughs> as Malakor with the Conqueror stacked up. Just going to give oh, Emerald oh, Plastic an axe to the face. It's just way too much healing. This Olaf is completely <gasps> unkillable nice. with the enchanters at his back. And now Spies is going to run down the catfish as well. A little bit of additional movement speed. It's Toby Swirls, tanky enough, should be able to escape. But once again, it's the side of Leviathan able to find some more kills. And now this tier two might go down as well. Yeah, it's so dangerously low here. And because they have to wow. respond to these pushes, they got one bot side, oh. which is going to create more pressure here. Yeah, it was uh, Tuller eventually able to take down that turret. And Toby sticking around, I think, a little bit. Oh, the reinforcements are here, though. Spare tracks coming in. Hecarim just fast enough to escape from the event horizon. Oh, but the never move is going to land. The Everfrost sets up for it. The Onslaught of Shadows comes out trying to take one with him, but Spies not able to do so. And they do get a kill onto the enemy jungler. That was a little bit of a shutdown. Uh, went over to Jalfik Swain, though, onto the support. I mean, Swain can use that money, but would have oh. probably rather uh, Vagar taken it, ideally. 
Yeah, and Swank oh, here was able to get their full oh, yeah. support uh, item finished. The Frostbang is not so quite sweet. finished here by Toad's death. Uh, yeah, that is true. That is true. A uh, support item advantage for Jalfik. I don't know how consequential that's really going to be, though, as that was so nasty from Tuller. Uh, they just have so much control over the enemy jungle that they can just sit in a bush like that. And Emerald Plastic just didn't even have the faintest idea that that was going to be a possibility. Just kind of Live walked by into a uh, die by the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> uh, literally, in this case. Yeah. Cheese did die. Oh. Well, we'll have to see how this all is going to be lining up with the top getting a nice pressure. And there, there's some nice push coming out of the mid lane as well. It's kind of even there. And Bot is going to be kind of close, although favoring for Sun Leviathan. Oh, it's Fair trash getting jumped on. Look at all of that damage from the Tristana. Just auto attacked him to death. Vagar not strong enough to fight back. Didn't have Primordial Burst. Again, it was just a few seconds away from coming off cooldown as Toad Step is getting attacked by Jalfik right now. Some supportal combat happening in the bot side jungle, but not for long as some more members are going to join the party. Sona going to be the first casualty, but Olaf, so strong, even with a single enchanter, should be enough. Able to take down that first kill on the Swain, and here comes Fives with the collapse as well. Going to be able to charge into the Tom Kench. It's a double kill for Malakor, easily able to lock that one down. And second Rift Herald now should be next on the menu. Yeah, like, well, also, don't forget about this bot tower that's going. It's just oh, well, happening yeah, uh, by itself, uh, right? Uh, like, there's so much heal. healing. It looked like they didn't right. have any anti-heal uh, with with Malcor B, who already has mm. a fully stacked Ravenous Hydra. But, like, there's some Grievous Wounds uh. coming out of Thornmail, and you had uh, the Oblivion Orb coming out here as well, and they were, they're were stuck in there because the Rhylaeus Crystal Scepter. And you have to remember, with some of the recent changes that you get max Grievous Wounds with the first item here. You don't have to build for the full thing. And with that much healing, he was just so healthy the entire time. Yeah, it, it did not look close, that particular fight. Uh, you know, I, I kind of have to question Jalfik trying to look for that aggressively with the aggressive Demonic Ascension. You know, when you're this far behind, I, I understand, you know, maybe feeling the pressure, like, the, that uh, they have to look for something, like they have to find something to try to get the team back into the game, but really uh i think should have should have known that wasn't in a position to actually set up for a play like that uh and definitely the squad ended up getting punished it was another fight win for leviathan able to secure themselves at that neutral in the second rifter and now looking for their second dragon as well uh, noob the legend is in the area in the tri brush right now on the bottom side of this dragon pit see if the zach's gonna be able to find a steal I did steal the first dragon i believe that's a nice little yep. bit of damage from the True Shot Barrage, but as we see the Ragnarok getting popped, it's Malakor charging in onto this Swain, and he just has nowhere to go. On the other side of the fight, it's Fairtrax taken out by the Tristana. It's Noob the Legend <gasps> going in for the steal. Oh. Can't find it this time around. Zach will flash out of the pit, has a Blast Cone. Looks like Noob the Legend's going to be able to navigate his way to safety, but that is the second dragon as well as a couple more kills going over to leviathan yeah it's a lot harder to steal an objective when you're ten thousand gold behind <laughs> uh, uh some nice split here as well but when you're this far behind you don't get to make the shot calls you have to say all right this is what the enemy is doing how do i lose the least here and how are am i going to be able to punish any mistakes if they make any because if if, if they play like just a mediocre game out of Sun Leviathan at this point, they should just win. They have to make some crucial mistakes, Whoa. and Cheese is going to have to be able to punish these. Okay, Toby going to go for the Abyssal Dive here. Not able to find the knockup, though. Going to get locked down by the beat drop. A lot of damage coming out. Still has the shield. Don't know if it's going to be enough. Noob the Legend trying to rotate up to save the top laner, but he's not going to be in time as the high note comes out. Alkalora perfectly on pitch with that one, and Tuller is doing it again. He's going to rocket jump in. The Event Horizon, not quite. And there's the flash out of it as Tuller finds another solo kill in the side lane. Yeah, Sun Leviathan trying to end on a high note with just an aggressive victory in the early game. And into the mid game, it's coming in. The goal difference is becoming wider and wider and uh, wider, which is really what you want to be seeing nuts. here. Yeah, and they're straight onto the Baron. It, uh, it is the T1 Baron that is available for Leviathan. Looks like they're going to be able to take it down. Noob the Legend is in that topside jungle, but might not even be aware that this has been started up. Going to have well, the information they can't even now. counter it. Like, what do you do here? Steal. Don't they? Oh, he's in the pit. He's in the pit. Oh, it is oh. the early smite 
from the Zack. Spies is able to lock it down, and the Zack will they, get they taken out. They need a gel peak. They need a gel peak for that play to work. Let's face it. They're sm they they're smites on point. Oh, oh, Tuller. Oh, Rocket Jump just about able to escape from that Demon Flare that came out from Jaw Fake. The Tristana still in danger, though. Big shutdown going over to the Swain once again. But they do trade it back for that very same Swain as Toby now. Potentially in danger, but has his mid laner here to peel with the event horizon. Spies continuing forward anyways. He's ghosting. He's very fast right now on the horse. But needs to wait for the rest of the team to join back up. Yeah, they certainly do. That gold is very important on them. Uh, especially <laughs> it's a thousand, which is a good gap here. But the XP difference is quite major here as well and not to mention that you were able to get a baron buff uh, off someone which is very important on tristana off the tristana pretty big as they don't have tristana here for this so if there is an angle could be an opportunity for four cheese but like though. you were saying they're so far behind this tier three turret could be taken out by one more shot from the cannon minion not able to find it have to wait for the next wave toby could look for an abyssal dive here but a lot of damage coming out from the seraphine leandries and rylai's complete so much peel so many slows from this bottom lane yeah making it a lot easier to land your abilities and just really stack up all of this damage utilize your kit as a whole and potentially tours mm -hmm. just going to be sitting here if they overextend oh, oh the axe oh man it was uh emerald plastic desperately looking for something there but uh, it was the side of leviathan able to turn it around malachor with the max range under tow picks it up yeah, it's 20 kills up, man. 14, yeah. nearly 15k gold difference. Uh, only to get two dragons. Uh, they weren't able to get the, the first one here. But nonetheless, it's, they don't need it. They don't need Soul to win here, quite obviously. Right. Uh, they just have to sit here, play things smart, don't get caught out, and just keep doing what they've been doing. I, absolutely right there, Abba. Tristana in the side lane has been working extremely well all game long. Spare tracks a little bit far forward in the mid lane here. Ooh. Gonna get caught by the crescendo. And there's the encore. Beautifully layered over the top. Easy as you like. The bot enchanter duo finds another victim as Toby. The that's the reset on the rocket jump. Tuller going in. Has the ignite to drop as well. The buster shot to finish the job in the slingshot is just a moment too late noob the legend oh the flash with never oh. move though it's jolly gonna be able to find it it's a big shutdown now for emerald plastic on the That's Ezreal. True. probably a little bit too late though so they're gonna be able to take down the tier three in mid and it's spies on the hecarim getting the pot wave set up now as well yeah the heart steel also not really being super impactful oh. uh Noob the Legend, gonna look for it, gets the uh, stretchy strikes onto the Enchanters, but the Zac running rapidly out of HP. Alcalora gonna be able to lock down that kill, going legendary on the Seraphine. Feet drop going to connection now as well on the Vagar as the waves start to come in. Crashing now onto the bot tier three. Looks like that will be the rotation for Leviathan. Two shot barrage, good damage onto the Seraphine. They immediately One thousand. take out the pop star. That's the maxed out shutdown for the Tom Kench this time around. Moving forward now, it's Emerald Plastic. Arcane shifting in. Another Mystic Shot, another auto attack. A Finds double. another kill on the Ezreal. Abyssal Dive now, gonna get the knockup onto Spies as Hecarim. Toby with the hard steel trying to get some more slow. So here comes Emerald Plastic. Ezreal's got the damage. Can Hecarim escape? He does have the Onslaught of Shadows to get over the wall. Second Ocean Dragon now on the Rift. Tuller starting to move over for this one, but they're down their bottom lane. It's 5v3, oh, but maybe not for long as Malakor doesn't have the Ragnarok quite yet, but flashing straight onto the face of Vagar, but it's denied by the Devour from Toby, able to keep the mid laner safe. Tuller almost able to find a pick there on to support. It's nearly 100 to zeroing Jalfik. And we do have a teleport coming into the mid lane. Salkalora trying to make their way back towards this bot side river for the dragon fight. Tuller still on in the wings, looking to get some damage down onto this front line. Dragon getting burned down. Here comes Hecarim Spies. Is going to follow up on the Encore oh. Emerald Plastic immediately getting taken out at the start of this fight. The wallets, they're dragon? just so heavy. Abba, and Hecarim just saunters, gallops uh, very elegantly into the dragon pit and steals away the objective. It's Tristana able to lock down a triple kill, and now Spies moving in just barely. Oh, is able to actually get that kill. Is it Quadra for uh, Tuller on the Tristana? Absolute dominance from this Tristana mid, basically all game long, and this will likely be the end, Abba. 
Yeah, the ants go marching in one by one, falling individually here. Will they end up being able to get the penta? They got the there penta! It is. Penta kill for Oh my Cooler. gosh, what a hype Absolutely. game. A Baron Steel in game one, and now a penta to finish off the set. There's not going to be an encore matchup for the here, hexakill. although we are going to see a fountain dive in here. Although the Nexus hasn't fallen quite yet. There's a potential for a comeback, although it's <laughs> well, not looking Dooler quite likely. Spit a bit, spit a bit! Spit a bit. <laughs> Tristana, they're gonna be able to focus down the Nexus. Malakor able to give it one more axe, and there is the end. Leviathan with a 2-0 and a dominant win for Four Cheese Blend. Clearly not the way they wanted things to end, um, but gave it their best shot. Yeah, admirably played by both teams, but the cheese, the four cheese is going to be axed out of the competition now. So they're going to be out. I wish them the best of luck into next season should we see them here. Mm -hmm. But we have a quite potent team here who could be uh, potential victors here for the finals. Of course, it's going to be a little bit. They're just going to be fighting flash abusers in the, to the quarterfinals who are going to be going in, I believe, next week into this lineup so we'll have to see who's going to win that matchup next time yeah definitely uh going to be exciting to see and uh of course there is also the dreaded mythic academy who is waiting up there in the upper bracket along with nwe oh, delta yeah. again that matchup going to be tomorrow night so that is really you know that they are the bar here in the targon division yeah. Um, so and they knocked they knocked some Leviathan out into the Rumble stage exactly. where they could have been knocked yeah. out as well. So uh, maybe a revenge match in the future into the finals. We'll have to see. It's going to be a little bit until that happens. That's not going to be till April third, right. but uh, should be exciting. Should we get that bar? If Leviathan can keep up this form, I definitely yeah. agree. That is absolutely a possibility. Something that we could see and would be a huge result for Leviathan after what was a pretty tough regular season for them, right? Uh, finishing yeah. towards the bottom of the standings, having one of the worst records in the division, but a great run so far through the playoffs, able to take down uh, someone who was a very close competitor, right, in Four Cheese Blend in very decisive 2-0 fashion uh, is a really, really great look for them and their chances moving forward in the postseason. Yeah, game one was pretty close, but this one was not was not close at all. Uh, just to give a yeah. reference, uh, 500 gold uh, 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 leverage from every minute roughly is considered a stomp. And with a 26-minute game and a 13,000 gold difference, we saw a stomp. We did. We definitely did see one. And uh, who, who do you think was uh, had the biggest hand in, in creating this lead? I mean, it was Malakor again with the first blood in the top side, but Tooler seemed like they were doing a lot of work in the mid lane, and this bot duo of Seraphine Sona just working so beautifully right from the word go. They had priority down there. They had so mm -hmm. much control in the team fights around objectives as well. It was some incredible performances again across the board. Who who would you look towards on the vibe? So it's a difficult, it's a really difficult choice here, which is yeah. like a fantastic position to be in uh, for sure. Of <laughs> course, so like Malcor V did much better game two, right? They weren't giving as many shutdowns. They got a lot of value. They got down their towers as well. They got, I believe they got first tower as well as first flood and were able to rotate through the map. They didn't have any of those like weird like transitions where they swapped lanes and caused people to die. So that that makes them a pretty good contender on the opposite side tooler has gotten most damage in both games although True. they did give multiple shutdowns this game giving over like <laughs> two thousand gold probably in shutdowns with how they ended up doing it but they did shut down the main win condition or at least one of the win yeah. conditions as well so spear tracks wasn't able to get their vigor going they only had two items right uh, they had some nice cc to go with it but it wasn't enough yeah, compared to three and a half for Tuller at the end of the game, it was, uh, yeah, I think Tuller had double the gold of the Vagar at the end of 26 yep. minutes as well, which is pretty insane to actually double Five, the gold of your lane opponent. 587 gold per minute versus 295. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy. Yeah. Pretty crazy for sure. Uh, so, and then of course, I, I think the bot lanes played like well both games but i don't think they like super stood out like where where the it's hard game to stand out on seraphine and sona they're not the flashiest of champions right? they're not the flashiest champions but they did really well and they did their job very well they did uh, so 
I think the most consistent player here, I, I think I actually might pick Spias just because they were able to hover and make sure some mm. of these things were done and they weren't giving down these shutdowns. They were able to secure a lot of these objectives. They were able to get some of these vision that they needed as well. So I think overall, Spias uh, is, is the king here. I like it. I like it personally. And Spies also was uh, had a big hand in actually moving towards that top side and getting Malakor the early advantage this time around. You know, yep. In game one, it was the Pantheon that was finding those solo kills, but this time around, Hecarim did have to come over to assist and was very, very successful in doing so. Personally, uh, I, I kind of want to look towards the bot lane, actually. You know, they uh, they didn't have the flashiest of, of performances, as we were just saying, but I do feel like they were the most reliable pieces in, in this second game, at least. Um, yeah. I, I kind of want to give it to... Uh, we'll give it to Toadstep since I te see uh, Toadstep over there in Twitch chat. Really great play on the Sona there, man. Some really nice crescendos. And uh, I am I remember several instances as well where the Sona was like just barely able to make it out yep. of fights on like a sliver of HP, really playing to the limits and, of the champion. And even though they only had a crowd control score of 11, uh, their carry wouldn't have had a crowd control of 45 if they didn't lock them down to set up all of those other potential plays with their CC as well. So they really did enable stuff. And, you know, as an AD carry main, I always love seeing support shine because they are so mm. important onto how compositions play as a whole. Uh, underrated, in my opinion, how strong support is. Absolutely. But like we said, strong performances across the board in this one for Leviathan, a very decisive 2-0 tonight. Do you have any closing thoughts on this match, Abba, on Leviathan, on the playoff brackets overall as we move ever closer to the end of Season 14? I think the the best closing remark here is uh, the draft phase, I think, was played well by both teams, but the early game really did transform the mid and late game and just getting one mm -hmm. or two laners far ahead shaped how that both games worked. And because yeah. of how that was secured on the side of Sun Leviathan, they were able to become this great big serpent, unhinge their jaws and swallow mm -hmm. the team whole and we didn't see that out of cheats and i think that's why sun leviathan ended up winning the series i guess leviathans really enjoy eating cheese Who yeah. knew? Um, Who knew? but we did learn that tonight a really really excellent stuff um but that is going to do it for this evening it was leviathan uh able to come away with a very nice victory gonna move forward now in the lower bracket uh their next opponent you just called it out Earlier there, ABBA, is going to be uh, the Flash Abusers, as you mentioned earlier on. So keep stay tuned for that matchup, guys. will happen sometime over the course of this next week. But for myself, from ABBA here, from the entire production team at Style Esports, thank you so, so very much for watching. We do have our matchup tomorrow night that I also mentioned earlier. That's going to be at 8 or uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, Mythic Academy versus NWE Delta, the upper bracket final of this very same division. We're going to have Chaos and Potato on the cast for that one, so make sure you don't miss it. But for now, thank you for watching, and good night.